Hi guys, welcome back to the Crafty Home. Today I'm going to share with you one of my favorite projects that I do in crafting. One of my favorite ways to craft is to repurpose things that I find in antique shops. So for example, we will be working on etching a glass vanity tray or it's a mirror vanity tray. So they were really popular in like the 60s and 70s. It was a place where people would put maybe their perfume bottles or something on their vanity. Um, and I just think that they make beautiful pieces either to display or to use in your own home to put maybe on your vanity or in a kitchen or a living room. And I love etching them. So usually I will do something like a saying or even a monogram. And so I'm gonna take you through how I do that today. Um, it's actually a very easy process and it's very quick. You can actually do this process on a lot of different things, glass vases, any kind of mirrors, basically anything glass. So let's get started. Once you've picked out your project piece, the next step is to get a stencil. There's two ways you can do this. You can either buy one that's pre-done or you can make one yourself. So here I'm on Etsy and you can get a custom stencil or one that's already pre-designed. You can go to Hobby Lobby and they've got ones that are pre-cut. They have both pictures and letters so you can make names out of them. And you can also go to Amazon. And Amazon has probably the greatest variety of ones that are pre-done. Here are just a couple that I found that I thought were pretty neat. So basically you find a picture that you might want and buy that stencil. I am personally going to make my own. So I am using a program called Silhouette Studio and this came with my Silhouette machine. For those of you who don't know, a Silhouette is a cutting machine. It's a personal crafting machine. You can basically do all kinds of things, but its main goal is to cut materials. So here I'm just picking out the font that I want to use on my project piece. If any of you are interested in a tutorial on how to use Silhouette Studio program, just let me know in the comments and I can do that for you. I'm gonna cut this on contact paper that I got from Walmart. You can also find contact paper like this at places like the Dollar Tree, Target, even teacher supply stores. My mat is kind of old, so it's not sticking as well, so I'm actually gonna stick a little bit of masking tape just to secure the edges so it doesn't move when I put it in my machine. I just need to buy myself a new one, but I haven't done it yet, so we're gonna make do. That's all I do is I just secure it. This mat is sticky, but it's just not super sticky anymore, and I don't want it to move when I cut it, so that is how I get that on there. I'm going to push load cut mat. Once your project is cut, you want to weed out the negative space. So any place that you want your project to be etched, you want to take out the contact paper from that so that you have an open space where the cream will actually touch. So that is what I'm doing here. And that's it, that is your stencil. The next step is to add transfer paper to your stencil and this acts as a way to be able to bring your stencil over to your project. There are several different transfer papers you can use. Here I'm just using clear contact paper and you can get this from Walmart. You wanna peel the clear contact paper off of the liner and then just stick it right on top of your stencil. 
And then you're gonna take something rigid, like a credit card or some sort of tool, and scrape across the top of your stencil. And that will get your contact paper to stick to the transfer tape. This is the antique mirror tray that I was talking about. I have several of these around the house. I collect them, so I have several shapes and sizes, but this one normally sits on my desk and I'm just gonna add the etching to this today. So now that my stencil is ready, I wanna peel the back of the contact paper off of the stencil and the transfer tape that we put on earlier will hold the stencil together. The next step is to position your stencil onto your project piece. It might be helpful to use some sort of ruler to make sure you get it centered. This is just for me, so I'm eyeballing it. Once you have it positioned where you want it, you're gonna take the same tool that you added the transfer tape with earlier and you're going to push your stencil down onto your glass piece. And you wanna make sure it's really secure because you don't want the cream to go under any part of the stencil. So I'm gonna go over it both on top of the transfer tape and after I've removed the transfer tape and even run my finger along the edges too just to double check that everything is push down and that there are no gaps that the cream could leak underneath of. This is the etching cream we're going to use today. It's called Armor Etch. You can get this from Hobby Lobby, Michaels, even Walmart. And you're just gonna take a paintbrush and you're going to add the cream to your stencil. You wanna make sure to get a good, thick, even coating to make sure that it etches as evenly as possible. This etching cream will be permanent, so you wanna take care not to get etching cream anywhere except for the stencil that you're using it. So if you're uncomfortable doing this and are worried about that, tape off the extra parts of the mirror, maybe put newspaper or something on the parts that you don't want etching cream, and that will save your piece just in case. After your cream is done being added, go ahead and double check your piece and make sure that there's no thin spots or spots that you missed. And then you're gonna leave the etching cream on for just a couple of minutes. Four to five minutes should be plenty. Once your project has sat, it's time to rinse it off. Just take it over to the sink, use the same brush you used to put the etching cream on and just brush off the etching cream that's sitting there. Once it's rinsed clean, it's time to remove your stencil. It's not gonna look like it did anything at first, but once you remove the stencil, you'll be able to see what the etching cream did. Use a lint-free cloth to dry off your piece once your stencil's removed. And now your piece is finished. This is my absolute favorite thing to do to mirror and glass pieces. And I'll actually insert in a couple of projects that I've done in the past at the end of this video so you can get some inspiration.
like this video. If you do, please leave it a thumbs up. And if you want to see more videos like this from me, subscribe and hit the notification bell.